We will now discuss the coronary circulation, which is the functional blood supply of the heart. The coronary circulation is part of the systemic circulation. Blood that circulates through arteries, or the arterial system, is referred to as arterial blood. And blood that circulates through veins, or the venous system, is referred to as venous blood. The arterial blood is oxygenated and the venous blood is deoxygenated. We will first consider the arterial blood that supplies the wall of the heart through arteries called the coronary arteries. The two main coronary arteries that will further branch to supply the wall of the heart are the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. As was already mentioned, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery branch off the aorta at the aortic root, specifically at the aortic sinus, where we can find two openings, an opening for the left coronary artery and an opening for the right coronary artery. These openings allow for the blood from the aorta to enter these arteries to provide oxygenated blood to the wall of the heart. Let us first discuss the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery branches into two major arteries, the circumflexed artery and the anterior interventricular artery. The circumflexed artery can be found along the atrioventricular groove, or the coronary sulcus. It partly encloses or wraps around the heart and continues to the posterior side of the heart. The circumflex artery supplies oxygenated blood to most of the wall of the left atrium and the lateral and posterior wall of the left ventricle. The anterior interventricular artery is also called the left anterior descending artery. The anterior interventricular artery is found along the anterior interventricular sulcus. This artery supplies oxygenated blood to the interventricular septum, the anterior wall of the left ventricle, the wall of the apex of the heart, and portions of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The electrical conduction system of the heart is discussed in the physiology of the heart. Let us now discuss the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery branch into two major arteries, the right marginal artery and the posterior interventricular artery. Please note there are additional arteries that branch off the right coronary artery, but we will only focus our attention on these two arteries. The right coronary artery can be found along the atrioventricular groove or coronary sulcus. It partly encloses or wraps around the heart and continues to the posterior side of the heart. The right coronary artery supplies oxygenated blood to the walls of the right atrium, the anterior wall of the right ventricle, and portions of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The right marginal artery branches off the right coronary artery and supplies oxygenated blood to the lateral wall of the right ventricle. The posterior interventricular artery, also called the posterior descending artery, branches off the right coronary artery at the posterior side of the heart. The posterior interventricular artery is found along the posterior interventricular sulcus and supplies oxygenated blood to the posterior and inferior wall of the heart. Let us now discuss the venous blood supply and the coronary veins, which are also known as cardiac veins. The blood that circulates through these veins is deoxygenated. There are twice as many coronary veins as there are coronary arteries. The high carbon dioxide concentration in the blood is due to the carbon dioxide produced by the tissue cells of the wall of the heart. The coronary veins or cardiac veins that we will focus our attention on are the coronary sinus, the great cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein, the small cardiac vein, the anterior cardiac veins, and the posterior vein of the left ventricle. It is important to keep in mind that there are other coronary veins or cardiac veins in addition to these six. Furthermore, 
all these cardiac veins are considered systemic veins because they are part of the systemic circuit and the deoxygenated blood that flows through them is part of the systemic circulation. We begin with a great cardiac vein. It is the longest coronary or cardiac vein. This vein begins at the apex of the heart and ascends along the anterior interventricular sulcus and lies next to the anterior interventricular artery, also known as the left anterior descending artery. It continues to encircle or wrap around the heart along the coronary sulcus, alongside the circumflex artery. The great cardiac vein converges with the coronary sinus at the posterior side of the heart. The great cardiac vein receives deoxygenated blood from the region supplied by the anterior interventricular artery, or the left anterior descending artery. The posterior vein of the left ventricle is found posteriorly and converges with the coronary sinus. The posterior vein of the left ventricle receives blood supplied by the circumflex artery. The small cardiac vein is found along the coronary sulcus and usually runs alongside the right coronary artery as it encircles or wraps around the heart. The small cardiac vein converges with the coronary sinus. The small cardiac vein receives deoxygenated blood from the lateral wall of the right ventricle, the region supplied by the right marginal artery. The anterior cardiac veins consist of three to four veins that are found on the anterior surface of the right ventricle. It receives blood from the anterior wall of the right ventricle, a region supplied by the right coronary artery. These veins directly drain deoxygenated blood into the right atrium, bypassing the coronary sinus. However, in some individuals, they may converge with the small cardiac vein as shown in this diagram. The middle cardiac vein is found posteriorly and begins at the apex of the heart, ascends along the posterior interventricular sulcus, and converges with the coronary sinus. The middle cardiac vein runs alongside the posterior interventricular artery, also known as the posterior descending artery. The middle cardiac vein receives deoxygenated blood from the region supplied by the posterior interventricular artery, or the posterior descending artery. The coronary sinus is a large vein that receives blood from the great cardiac vein the small cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein, and the posterior vein of the left ventricle. It is found along the coronary sulcus at the posterior side of the heart. The coronary sinus drains the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium through the opening of the coronary sinus. Furthermore, when the ventricles contract, these coronary blood vessels the coronary arteries and the coronary or cardiac veins are compressed or squeezed due to the high pressure generated by the contraction. So no blood can flow through them. Only when the ventricles relax are these coronary blood vessels no longer compressed or squeezed. So blood can now flow through them. One thing to keep in mind, these coronary blood vessels that we've gone over the coronary arteries and the coronary or cardiac veins will not always be organized in the way that we've discussed. There are differences or variations between individuals. One example of these variations is the small cardiac vein. It is not always present in every individual. Another example is that in some individuals, the posterior interventricular artery that usually branches off the right coronary artery branches off the circumflex artery instead. Still another example are veins that empty into another cardiac vein rather than into the coronary sinus, while other veins empty directly into the right atrium, bypassing the coronary sinus altogether, as we've seen with the anterior cardiac veins. So 
these variations and differences between individuals makes each one of us unique. Let us now summarize the overall coronary circulation. We begin with the two coronary arteries, the right and left coronary arteries that branch off the aortic root, specifically at the aortic sinus. The right coronary artery branches or divides into two major arteries, the right marginal artery and the posterior interventricular artery, or the posterior descending artery. The right marginal artery supplies oxygenated blood to the lateral wall of the right ventricle. The deoxygenated blood is then received by the small cardiac vein. The small cardiac vein converges with the coronary sinus. The posterior interventricular artery, or posterior descending artery, supplies oxygenated blood to the posterior and inferior wall of the heart. The deoxygenated blood is then received by the middle cardiac vein. The middle cardiac vein converges with the coronary sinus. There is a region of the right coronary artery that supplies oxygenated blood to the anterior wall of the right ventricle and portions of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The deoxygenated blood from this region is received by the anterior cardiac veins. For most individuals, the anterior cardiac veins directly drain into the right atrium, while for some individuals, they converge with the small cardiac vein. The left coronary artery branches or divides into two major arteries, the anterior interventricular artery, or left anterior descending artery, and the circumflexed artery. The anterior interventricular artery, or left anterior descending artery, supplies oxygenated blood to the interventricular septum, the anterior wall of the left ventricle, the apex of the heart, and portions of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The deoxygenated blood is then received by the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein converges with a coronary sinus. The circumflex artery supplies oxygenated blood to the wall of the left atrium, the lateral and posterior wall of the left ventricle. The deoxygenated blood is then received by the posterior vein of the left ventricle. The posterior vein of the left ventricle converges with the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus drains the deoxygenated blood that it receives from the small cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, and the posterior vein of the left ventricle into the right atrium. This slide shows both the coronary arteries and the coronary or cardiac veins that we've discussed, as well as the anterior and posterior views of the heart. I'd like you to carefully look over this slide. Memorizing the location of these coronary blood vessels will help you learn the region of the heart they supply or serve. The next slide is for practice purposes in labeling and identifying the coronary blood vessels. This slide goes over a few of the diseases that affect the heart, such as coronary artery disease, CAD, and myocardial infarction, MI. When there is inadequate flow of blood to a tissue or organ, this is referred to as ischemia. If the inadequate blood flow involves one of the coronary blood vessels, such as the coronary artery or coronary arteries, then this is called coronary ischemia. The inadequate blood flow through the affected coronary artery is due to a partial or complete blockage of the affected coronary artery. This is classified as a coronary artery disease, CAD. Coronary artery disease is a type of coronary heart disease, CHD. A blockage or an obstruction is called an occlusion. The blockage or obstruction or occlusion of a coronary artery can be due to fatty deposits that form within the wall of the coronary artery. The fatty deposits and eventual plaque development is called atherosclerosis. As the plaque builds up, the wall of the blood vessel thickens, 
This narrows the opening within the artery, which reduces blood flow to the tissue or organ. If this develops within one or more of the coronary blood vessels, we have a coronary ischemia. The coronary ischemia will result in the inadequate blood flow to the myocardium. Since the inadequate blood flow now affects the myocardium, the condition is called myocardial ischemia. The reduction of blood flow to the myocardium decreases the oxygen delivery to these cardiac muscle cells or cardiac muscle fibers. The reduced supply or the inadequate delivery of oxygen to a tissue or organ is called hypoxia. This reduction of oxygen to the myocardium weakens the cardiac muscle cells. The weakening of the cardiac muscle fibers is called cardiomyopathy. If the cardiomyopathy is the result of myocardial ischemia, then this is called ischemic cardiomyopathy. The plaque can become unstable and cause the formation of a blood clot. A blood clot is called a thrombus. If the formation of the thrombus occurs at a coronary artery or coronary arteries, then this is called coronary thrombosis. The coronary thrombosis further reduces the supply of oxygen to the myocardium, since this now further narrows the opening of the artery. Coronary ischemia can be the result of atherosclerosis and or the formation of a thrombus. Coronary ischemia can lead to myocardial ischemia. Myocardial ischemia weakens the cardiac muscle fibers, resulting in ischemic cardiomyopathy. If the myocardial ischemia is left untreated, then the weakened cardiac muscle fibers can die. The death of a tissue due to a blockage or an obstruction, or an occlusion is called an infarct. Since the tissue that dies is the myocardium, then this is called myocardial infarction, MI, commonly known as a heart attack. Chest pains are called angina pectoris, usually accompanies myocardial ischemia, which potentially can lead to myocardial infarction, as was already mentioned. Angina pectoris usually alerts the person that something is wrong. Unfortunately, not everyone experiences chest pain and discomfort, so it goes unnoticed until it's too late. This is referred to as a silent heart attack, a seen with diabetics and the elderly. Myocardial infarction, or MI, is usually diagnosed with an EKG and blood tests. A blood test can show elevated concentrations of cardiac troponin T and cardiac troponin I, which are indications of someone having a heart attack. Cardiac troponin T and cardiac troponin I are two subunits of the protein troponin. Troponin is found in cardiac muscle cells and is part of the thin myofilaments that is involved in muscle contraction. When the muscle cells are damaged or die, these proteins are released into blood when normally they should be contained within the cardiac muscle fibers. Risk factors of coronary artery disease, CAD, and myocardial infarction, MI, are smoking, high blood cholesterol levels, high blood glucose levels as seen with diabetics, lack of exercise, poor dietary habits, being overweight, high blood pressure, and having a family history of CAD and or MI. Looking at this diagram, I have two questions for you. First question, could you identify which coronary artery is occluded? Second question, what area or areas of the heart is or are damaged as a result? Pause the video and answer these questions. When done, play the video to check your answers. The answer to the first question is the anterior interventricular artery, or left anterior descending artery. The answer to the second question are the interventricular septum, the anterior wall of the left ventricle, the apex of the heart, and portions of the electrical conduction system of the heart. Since this is the major coronary arteries that supply oxygen to these areas of the heart, severe 
or complete occlusion of the anterior interventricular artery or left anterior descending artery will likely lead to sudden death. Therefore, this artery is sometimes referred to as the widowmaker.